You're outside a house in Avondale, which has been badly damaged by the earthquakes. In fact, you can see how it's all moved this way. And of course, that can be a problem. But before we discuss that, I want to wish Lloyd a happy birthday. It's his birthday today, and he's brought us a cake. Um, now, Lloyd, property boundaries, if they move during earthquakes, what's done about that? Well, Shelley, that's really why I've got the cake here, so to help explain what happens to property boundaries when, when there's an earthquake. Imagine the, the, the cake is the earth and the cake itself underneath the icing is like the bedrock of the earth. And the icing on top is the layers of soil on top of the bedrock. And this rectangle here is, just imagine that's a, a, a section in a, in a subdivision. So when there's an earthquake, usually what will happen, the bedrock will, will be deformed, there'll be some changes, but it might just rotate or move or go up or down. And the property boundary, the rectangle, doesn't, doesn't change and we can accept that. So everything's moved the same amount in the same direction. Right, okay. So no one owns any more or less land, yeah. it's just the same. Okay, so what happens if there's um, movement that isn't all the same? Well, the most obvious uh, movement is when a property is across a fault line, like you saw out at Highfield right. Road yesterday, right? So in that sort of situation, the whole um, cake can split and move like that across a fault line. So obviously your rectangle is now a different shape. It's not a rectangle anymore. And the boundary has, effect, has got zigzags in it. And we, properties that cross a fault line, we, re, we really can't do much about that. You can't push it back into shape or anything like that. So the boundaries basically go where they sh shifted to. So this property would have a, a kink in the boundary. Right, and you'd see that on a survey map. But I don't think the house would be in very good shape after that. Not if it was across the fault, no. <laughs> no. OK, so in areas like this that are beside the river, there's been quite a lot of liquefaction. What impact has that, that had on boundaries? It's one result of the liquefaction is what you can see here. Um, the, the ground tends to move towards the river because the, the river's a weak point. There's nothing, right. nothing, no ground supporting the ground next to it down there. So the ground tends to move towards the river and that's why you've got gaps, gaps like this. It's demonstrating that the grounds move towards the river. If that is all that had happened here, it would, it would be like a, a corner of the, the icing sliding off the, the corner of a, the cake sort of down to there. Right. All right. The rest of the property boundaries are still where they were before. So if we came and resurveyed that property, we'd be, sti we'd be sticking the boundary peg back to where it was before, not yeah. to where, not, it right. ha the boundaries haven't moved. Yeah, it's okay. just that, that top layer that's yeah. moved. Yep. Okay. But generally what you've got happening in an area like this, there's widespread liqu liquefaction. So effectively what that means is that all, all of these boundary points may have moved and they may have all moved in different directions, okay? So you've got, there are no marks that you can reliably say were in the same position as they were before the earthquake. So it, it actually becomes fairly difficult and the surveyor's just got to collect all the evidence he can, which, so he finds old survey marks, he finds old boundary pegs, he sees where fences have moved to, uh, all the evidence that he can get, and then makes the best decision he can about where the boundaries should go. Right. And of course, if those kind of things have happened, chances are the top layer that we want to build on may not in fact be suitable for building so that's why we end up with places like this that have been red zoned because we can't find a suitable solution in the short term to rebuild people's properties. So you might like to imagine what you might do if you were living in an area like this, how you might cope, what the challenges would be, you could discuss that with your class.